So hi Dixons, as this is the start of a new academic year and the first video in our new project, um, uh, it's thought it's best to introduce myself. For those who don't know me, my name is Luke Sparks. I was the founding principal of Dixons Trinity Academy uh, and I'm now an executive director across the trust, uh, strategic lead for education. So I'm just going to ask my colleague uh, Jenny Thompson. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm principal at Dixons Trinity, which is where we are today. Uh, I'm also an executive principal with Dixons Multi Academy Trust, um, looking after our wonderful music primary, which you can just about see through the windows behind. Um, Dixons Kings up in Lidget Green, which isn't very far away. Uh, and then I also work with the Teaching Institute and um, really looking after curriculum uh, across the Trust. I also work as a behaviour advisor for the DFE, which is a, a, a job that I job share, mainly because of my time thief of a tiny toddler who had me up at four o'clock this morning. So please forgive any incoherence from me today. Okay, so we've moved from the heart space at Dixon's Trinity into uh, the lecture theatre because uh, well, family dining's going on. And you'll find out about family dining in a, in a, in a, in a, future, in a future video. Uh, so Jenny and I are going to take you through our thinking on this project. We, we, we want to explain why we're making these little videos uh, and also how we hope they might be useful uh, to staff across our trust and also potentially beyond, beyond our trust. So, so our next video will explore who we, Dixons, are and, 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 what, and what we stand for. Uh, however, we want to use this first video to, to explain why we're launching this channel uh, and this open uh, source uh, re resource. So firstly, I think what we want to make, uh, you know, what, what's really clear to us is that at Dixon's, culture is everything. Uh, we absolutely believe that culture eats uh, strategy uh, for breakfast. You know, quite rightly, there's, there's been a, a renewed focus on the curriculum recently. Um, however, without a strong culture, irrespective of how successful it appears in design, a curriculum, or, or any other initiative for that matter, will, will be squandered. So, so for us, culture really does, as I said, eat strategy for, bre for breakfast. I mean, in fact, culture is our strategy. Uh, and as a trust, you know, we, we, we believe that crafting culture you know, is our strength. You know, we're not perfect uh, by any stretch of, of, of the imagination. And we certainly don't think we've solved the UK's education problems. Far from it. We also don't believe, actually, that our, that our approach is, is that revolutionary. But others have said that it's the way in which we implement our ideas with rigour and simplicity that has led to our success. Um, and you know, we've had a lot of colleagues from across, across the country that have shown real interest in our, in, in our work, particularly on, 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 crafting, on crafting culture. And we've been, you know, we, we're very proud and, and feel quite honoured that people want to come and, come and look at our schools. You know, we don't particularly market ourselves. That's, you know, so that's been you know, uh, quite, quite humbling. Uh, so therefore, we've decided to, 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 to codify what we do through, through this channel in relation to crafting school culture, mainly to, hope to, mainly to help those schools within our trust, particularly as we start to move into other regions like Liverpool, but also potentially beyond our trust. So Jenny, can you tell us where the idea for this project came from and also why uh, we've been persuaded to make it open source? So um, I think... It's fair to say this is something you and I've been talking about for quite a while. Um, and maybe the context that we're living in at the moment has helped us give us a sense of urgency about um, sharing this as, as, as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Uh, we've always uh, accepted um, lots of visitors into our schools. As you say, we've never really gone out and sought that. That's something that we are um, so frequently kind of shocked by people's will and wish to come and, and spend time with us. Um, and really that isn't something we're able to offer at the moment. So we wanted to, uh, to try and make that available. But also part of our reflection was, it seemed sort of odd to us that we'd had so many visitors from outside of Dixon's when we haven't really always shared that opportunity within Dixon's um, in the way that, that you and I have often said it would, would be really meaningful for people. So this is primarily, our plan was to primarily make these little videos to share our thinking on culture with our team within Dixon's. And um, when we were having conversations with some people who I would describe as much more influential and much more intelligent than us, um, they say to us, actually, we think there would be a really interested um, audience for this beyond Dixon's. So um, it's completely free, it's open source, it's there should anyone be interested in it. Um, but our, our primary audience was, was always designed really to, to be our own team here at Dixon's. 
And I think, and I think it's fair to say, you know, we, we recognise that, the, you know, that there's lots of successful schools yeah. out there yeah. with, you know, with, with different ideas. There's lots of ways in which you can, you know, you, you, you can run a school. Um, but we do believe that actually all schools have some things in common. Or, or, well, all successful schools in particular have some strong things in, in, in common. And, and, and I think from our viewpoint, from the schools that we've visited, and we've visited a lot of schools, but you know, internationally and obviously within this country as well, uh, and, and organisations, in fact, not just schools beyond, you know, beyond, beyond the sector, the, the, the best organisations really do keep things very, very simple and, and implement their ideas with, you know, with absolute rigour. I, th I think that's key for us, isn't it? And, 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 and I think that's a key message we'll want to get through. Uh, through, 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 this th through this channel. Therefore, particularly for, tho for those colleagues uh, that may be joining us you know, from, from, from outside Dixon's, I think what's important is, it's the theory and the concepts and, and, and the frameworks that we're going to share that matter and not actually the specific ways in which those things manifest at Dixon's. You know, so you might, you might love the way that, 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 that we run our schools, you, 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 might, you might not. Um, that, that, that doesn't really matter. It, it's not the it's not the how, um, uh, sorry, it's the how, <laughs> not not the what. I think I think I think the inputs you know the inputs can be different, uh, uh, but the processes should yes. sh should be the same. And I think that, then that's what we really what we really want to get across. So you know and, and you know and in the end if you if you really don't like what we do you know if you well, hopefully those who work for Dixon's will like what we do yes. but if you if you're outside Dixon's you really don't like what we do then you know then, then switch us off you know yeah. we, we you know we, we we certainly haven't created this channel to tell people what to do or to make out that our way is the best way. Yeah. So that said, we do get a, a, an awful lot of visitors to, to, to all of our academies ac across, across Bradford and Leeds. And you know, and if just take one of our academies, Dixon's Trinity, this academy that, you know, that we're sat in, has had, I think, over 500 different schools have visited uh, in, in, the, in, in the last few years. And, 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 it, and again, that's without really too much marketing. I think it's around now almost 15% of secondary state schools have have had someone from their school visit visit this school, so 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 we do we're hoping we do think you know hoping this vid, you know this, this you know this new new channel is going to be going to be helpful. Um, so Jenny, can you just talk us through uh, for anyone who's chosen to keep listening uh, why we think culture is so important? Obviously, at um, at Dixon's we really do believe that uh, getting culture right is so important, and whatever form that specific culture might take, it is always the multiplier. Um, and we believe, and, and we think other people would share this um, this thought that that often leaders don't focus on on the culture of a school or an organisation enough, and that is ultimately because we're often adrenaline junkies. We want to quantify everything. We want it in a chart. We want numbers um, attached to it, and also because often as leaders we're pretty prideful of our own intelligence, and so much around culture is is pretty humble. Um, we've seen it at first hand. You know, schools uh, focus on these uh, things or really take culture really seriously at the start of an academic year or at, at a return to school. Um, or, or perhaps when an initiative or an idea is, is first introduced, but they just don't stick at it over time. Um, and maybe it gets uh, the, the sort of putting it in place gets a bit boring or it takes a long time or um, people identify little shortcuts that can be made to, that make things easier. Or perhaps because it's difficult, because um, doing the mundane things every day is, is just quite difficult, um, people just over time find a way that's easier and, and conclude that the original plan just wasn't working. So they move on to something else or, or another initiative. Whereas we would say that the best schools really stick at it. They are absolutely persistent. Persistence, insistence and consistence with, um, with absolute humility. Um, and I would all, all, always um, reflect on that it's not about necessarily getting it right. Um, certainly at Dixon's we don't think that we're necessarily getting it always right. Um, because it is really, really hard work, but you do stick at it. You don't change the plan because it's difficult or because it's not always right. We believe it's Sisyphean. Um, it's the same journey day after day, pushing that rock up the hill and, and the, the journey to getting a culture really secure is, is never truly um, completed. And um, I know you believe there's a real what, mor well, mor moral imperative yes. to share in this. Um, yes, absolutely. I think we have um, a kind of underpinning 
thought here at Dixon's, which is that we share everything, um, everything we can as frequently as we can, whether that's through um, visits, which we, we are really open hearted about and, and try to um, facilitate as often as we can, whether it's through um, both you and I teach um, or deliver with um, Ambition Institute's um, Future Leaders programme. And we've done that for a number of years now, um, or whether it's strategically helping to shape programmes for organisations like Ambition. Um, or whether it's through uh, board membership, which I know you're much more experienced in than me, or um, training and development, both within Dixon's and beyond. However, we do, through this project, want to move to something that is um, much more open source in structure to try and extend that reach um, and to try and do so in, a, in as agnostic a format as we can possibly find, one that absolutely anyone can access. It's meant to be bite-sized. It's, me it's meant to be um, really accessible. So we want to try and over the, the course of these uh, developing these channels, want to try and codify our content into watchable, listenable little bites. Um, nothing as onerous as a podcast. There are already brilliant examples of podcasts in education um, or nothing perhaps as distancing as um, as blogs or perhaps as blogs have become over time. Um, our thinking is about being really quick, really accessible. These are just agile pieces of commentary that can be strung together into coherent sequences, um, but also have efficacy in and of their own piece. So the little five minutes that you watch should make sense as the little five minutes that you watch. Um, we're, we think of it as a playlist um, or an album. Each song or episode of, of this um, has uh, uh, you know, it's just a couple of minutes long in its own um, identity and stands alone, but there is overall coherence um, uh, for the whole channel. And I know you've been really inspired. We've both been really inspired by the work of, uh, the, of some charter schools in the, in the States like First Line, Uncommon, KIPP uh, over the years, and, and particularly more recently around their openness. Um, I think we've been pretty humbled by how open particularly KIPP and Uncommon have been um, over the, the recent kind of uh, period of time. And I feel we've got some, some distance to travel with that work. And also we would like to kind of honor and um, replicate that to the best of our ability through, through this project. For me, um, particularly thinking about um, the uh, recent um, piece of work that KIPP have made available uh, it to, it, again, in, in an open source format around their thinking, um, and their retiring of the work hard, be nice, um, very famous kind of slogan that has guided them for many years. Um, I think it's really helped us surface some thinking in the world of mission statements and the deployment of summative language and the kind of positives and the risks that are attached to that. And I really tried over the, over the, the sort of summer um, to set this out in 10 steps of thinking. All I will say is this is where I'm up to now. Um, and I know that this thinking isn't finished, but that it is my belief as an English teacher before anything else um, that uh, kind of completed thought isn't necessarily the desirable position and thinking should and being in a position of thinking should never prevent us from from opening dialogue. Um, and I would challenge anyone to always surface their surface things um, when they're thinking rather than when they're really convinced they've landed on the right answer, because what's the point in opening dialogue at that point? So the kind of 10 steps that I'd like um, to talk us through is the first one is that uh, words are so often the cheapest um, currency of organisational culture and that actually it's the shared definitions that matter. We need to learn to listen with authenticity and be willing to be informed by what we hear. Where our words offend, alienate or meet with challenge, we need to listen more, listen harder and become more informed rather than potentially as, as historically has been the case entrenched. Then we need to take considered action as a result and be able to explain those actions and particularly the purpose attached. And really thinking about the work that Kip and Uncommon have, um, have, have been able to talk about in a way that has been so much more open and, and so much more freeing. I think we need to acknowledge that white colleagues are not absolved of the responsibility for diversity and inclusivity, nor are our black or brown colleagues responsible for the direction or amplification of this. It's only through true reciprocity and plurality that we will achieve collective representation, direction and clarity of vision. There can be a huge disconnect between intention and perception. We know that. 
um, this does not invalidate the truth of perception. So kind of the best example I can say is simply arguing that a perception was not the intended outcome does not determine impunity. Uh, it may simply evidence the absence of intended malice. So really actively willing, uh, being willing to embrace challenge, actively seek, hear and learn from diversity and both ourselves and encouraging others not to duck the hard thinking that is required within that. And that cognitive diversity is evidentially and objectively its own multiplier. We know that yet as organisations, we so rarely um, actively act upon it. So that means part of that is knowing and acknowledging the lived experiences of our communities. Um, you know, I'm principal here at Trinity. We know that 93% of our current alumni um, will not be granted opportunities equitable with their white peers when they leave school. And we need to decide as an organisation, as individuals, how to talk about this together. So as an example, controlling for class, prior school attainment or subject studies studied, our BAME students do less well at university compared to how well they did at school. They're national figures. In fact, they're international figures. And they do less well in the labour market compared to how well they did at university. So it is an escalating um, complexity throughout life. And this is simply not true for white peers. And the gap persists long after graduation. And it is just as large for high performing, for example, Chinese graduates as it is for high performing black graduates. So kind of some of those old myths around um, uh, diversity uh, are, are really being eroded by this data. If you, I would, I would um, encourage everyone or, or, or certainly all of our, our teachers here in Dixon's that if you want to speak the truth to your students, that presupposes that we know what it is. So we need to make sure um, that we do. Now, we're not here to tell you a perspective to take, for example, on the KIPP statement, um, but I do think that there are some nudges um, really worth thinking about. Last year in discussion with uh, some other school leaders, we shared, for example, our concerns about UK schools who were perhaps copying or, or taking from, taking examples from um, the UK schools that had taken earlier ideas from, uh, from the US charters and that things can become diluted or a little bit confused um, with a risk of, of kind of an underlying risk of moving away from purpose and into power and into environments of control. And I think that may well be that schools perhaps are not always aware or understand wholly um, what they're trying to copy or what, what kind of the essence is. And there's a risk of taking just the front piece, just the theatre, just the superficial piece. Um, an artifact dislodged from, dislodged from its value um, can become manifested very, very differently. So, for example, an emerging um, perception in the charters that it was that they were in America was that they were somehow saving students from their community. Um, and I think that's challenging in that it didn't foreground respect for and critical re relationship with, um, with community. And perhaps um, this is the origin of the thinking that has transitioned more recently um, to certainly from, from my perspective, what feel valid and, and uh, accusations or, or, or valid concerns that need to be aired and need to be discussed of paternalistic racism and the very ugly idea that the majority race has the right to define um, what is good for the minority race. Um, by contrast, here at Tr Trinity, um, I, I, as an example of, of a school within Dixon's, we talk about doing what we do in service to our community, not in spite of it, and we live this every day. So for example, how often when visiting a school or talking about extraordinary progress, is this foregrounded um, by school leaders with anguished statistics evidencing the perceived suffering of a school's community. And I would urge any school leader to make a conscious decision about this and how it lands for you and how it lands for your community. So we know, for example, that two schools with identical rules and, and serving identical communities, obviously hypothetical schools, could end up in very different places dependent on their ability to generate reciprocity with their communities. Sincere empathy, warmth and care absolutely reduce the risk of, of not being inclusive. And at Dixon's, we are unashamed to talk about the love we have um, for our children. Um, we absolutely front the love and that has so often changed the dynamic of um, relationships with our families. 
We live purpose, not power every day. We explain why to our families, to our children, to our community, and we consult. I mean, even in the, um, the conversation we've had today, I've used the term BAME for, um, to describe uh, some of our community. And, and that's a piece we're consulting on at the moment. Is that the right terminology to use? And we shouldn't be the people, or we certainly shouldn't be alone in making those decisions. We don't just look at decisions through the lens of how it will be interpreted by our community. We don't make presumptions. We go out and we ask them actively. And we do this always without lowering our expectations or drive or commitment because we know that that is shared by our community. And I, and I think it's fair to say that, you know, that, that, that we say all this knowing that you know, we've got significant yeah. distance, distance yet to travel you know, to truly meet our objectives around diversity and inclusivity uh, in, uh, across Dixons. So thanks for that, Jenny. So just really now to kind of uh, end this first, this first video, uh, I just want to reinforce this idea that, you know, this channel, you know, it, it, it's there for those that want it, you know, that, that want to use it, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and there's lots of different ways you can run a school. We're not, you know, not for one minute saying that, you know, that, that, you know, that we, you know, as I said before, that we've solved the UK's education problems and that, and that you should run a school like Dixon's. There's loads of ways you can run a school. This, uh, this, 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 this channel is there for those you know, that, that want to use it. And remember, it's the theory, it's the concept, it's the frameworks that, that, that we're going to share that matter. It's not the specific ways that those things manifest themselves at, at, at Dixon's. I'm sure that all of our artifacts that you're going to see uh, will, will resonate with everyone. So it's important uh, to focus on the how, not the what. You know, the inputs can, and probably in, you know, in, in different contexts, should yes. be different. Uh, but the processes for turning these into reality or the stages of thinking, uh, they, 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 they can be the same. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Jenny, and, and thank you, uh, uh, colleagues. Um, uh, as I said, hopefully you're going to find this channel a helpful resource. If not, please do consider giving us some constructive uh, feedback. And uh, we hope you will uh, join us for our next video with uh, Sinek Weller, our CEO, where we talk about who we are and what we stand for at Dixon's.